Bam. Yep. Oh, hello. Hi. Mm. Temporarily. Bam. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Doom 3 VR Edition. We're going to be playing Doom 3 in VR. This is a relatively new release that just came out a little while ago. I'm just going to just gonna get going here. Okay, so... What I figured that we do just for fun is the Lost Mission, and I'm going to do Veteran also, because I've spent a little bit of time playing the game so far. Like, I've, I've spent a few hours playing the, uh, the the base campaign, the base, like, story mode or whatever, and uh, what I noticed right away is that playing in VR, it's a lot easier, because aiming is pretty, pretty easy, actually. So we'll just do this and see what happens. Now, minor issue with uh, this particular port, I've noticed, is that these cinematics are just sort of, yeah, you're just watching a screen like this in VR, which is not particularly immersive. And I also don't think that they're skippable. Yeah, like, I can't skip them, which is kind of annoying. Uh, and that's more annoying in the base game, because there are a lot more cinematics in the base game. But uh, here in this particular DLC, it's not so much. Yeah, one thing that's a bummer is that these cinematics are weird. But then, yeah, now we get into the actual game. Alright. Got me a pistol. Alright. I think that this is a pretty good port. I have been having a lot of fun with this so far. I also have uh, free aiming turned on, or free movement, rather. Uh, rather than the, uh, you know, sharp movements or whatever. I just have free looking because, I don't know, I don't get motion sick from it. Oh, hello. Jeez. Uh, but part of it is because it sort of depends on how fast the game that I'm playing is. If it's actually really fast, then I think my brain doesn't really have time to comprehend, you know, the weird, you know cognitive dissonance that is the 3D environment and moving around without actually moving around. Oh, I have, like, no health. Forgot that's how this place... how this mission starts off. So this mission was included with the, uh, Doom 3 BFG edition back in the day when it came out. And yeah, it's, like, basically every re-release of Doom 3 since then has included it. And I like this particular mission quite a bit, or, you know, this particular story, not quite DLC, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I think that it's a lot of fun. But I'm also going to try to keep the talking down to a minimum as much as possible, so I'll just shut up and do it again. And I'll, you know, comment on some things here and there. One of these guys. Ooh. Now, one thing that I've noticed with this particular part, with the VR edition here, is that I think that they upscaled the damage on the shotgun just a little bit. It seems a lot easier to one-hit kill imps than it used to be, and those possessed soldiers, same thing. It's a lot easier to kill them than it used to be. How did I just miss this health station over here earlier? Okay, not good. Oh, is that door unlocked now? Maybe that door is unlocked. No, it's still locked. 
the uh, the PDF thing is still a thing. But yeah, like the uh, the menu and and like the uh, cinematics, it's just sort of this screen that you look at rather than being an actual like part of your VR interface, which is a little bit of a shame. But you know, oh well. There's probably only so much that they could do with it as it was. What am I missing? Oh, this door probably unlocked after all the demons, like, spawned in or something. Okay. Hello? Hello? Goodbye. Hello? Another thing that you may have noticed is that with the VR edition, they, uh, I don't know if fixed is the right word, but I would argue that it's the right word. I would say that they fixed the sound of the machine gun. It actually makes, like, a heavy machine gun sound now. It doesn't sound like, you know, a playing card flapping on bicycle wheel spokes. I like it. it sounds great. See you up there, Em. Where you at? There you are. Whoa, hello. Jeez. Very Doom 3 right there. Just people popping out at you. Did I miss, like, a PDA or something? I feel like there's a PDA. Oh, here we go. Alright. Going down ladders is a little bit weird, but it's manageable. Oh, jeez, hi. Good to see you. remember if this is the way forward or just a little bonus path. I think this is the way forward. Open up. Open up, please. There we go. My first experience with this game was actually on the original Xbox. I didn't own an Xbox, but I had a, a buddy of mine uh, named Josh, who, I don't know, on the off chance that he's watching, hey Josh, how you doing, man? Uh, but yeah, he uh, he was sort of like a high school friend of mine that I had, and uh, he and his uh, like uh, sister and like brother-in-law, maybe, I, I forget the relation, um, they, they had it. And I came over there after school and uh, played it a, a fair amount, and it was a lot of fun. So that was my first experience with this game. Um, yeah, the original Xbox version, not Xbox 360. I'm not talking about the Doom 3 BFG edition, I'm talking like the Xbox port. And it's it was interesting going back and uh, playing the original version, so to speak, after that. Because I played it on PC a few years later, as it was originally intended. And, uh... Yeah, the whole, like, opening hangar area is just not in the original Xbox version. Little, little tiny 
things. Anyway, I'll stop talking about that. I'll just continue playing the game here. I was going to try to blow up that barrel, uh, but I was going to pop off this zombie first, and I just uh, messed up the timing. That's okay. I'm still alive. Hello. second. Full strange. Yeah, like, even though I'm playing on, you know, like, veteran or whatever the hard difficulty is, I'm still just strolling past everything here. So far, anyway. That might change a little bit later. Hello! I hate those possessed soldiers. They're so annoying. And yeah, as you can see, I'm using the aim controller, and I think that it is pretty awesome. I think that it works out pretty well. Oh, hey, guy. You must help me. Time is critical. My name is Richard. Dr. Richard Myers. And I believe I'm the last one alive from my team. I was working with the engineers there before the connection was lost. I, I don't know what happened to them. But without your help, we may all die. I hope I can count on you. Here's the situation. We were conducting bi-dimensional tests before the attack. And I've lost control of the communication relays. And now we have a functional teleporter still active in the other dimension. And if it's not destroyed, other dimension. those creatures may be able to use it to reach as far as Earth. You've got to help me. I've done everything I can here, but I don't have enough power to activate the teleporter on this side. The engineers were working with me to redirect auxiliary power from NPRO straight to Exus Labs. But now, looks like you're the only one that can help. I'll upload the array instructions to the SSD at your console. There. Take the SSD and find the main power station in Sector 2. Just plug it into the main terminal and I'll contact you there. There's very little time. Please hurry. Okay. Here we go. That's what I think I needed. Let's see if there's any audio files on here. Oh, there is. Uh, Chief Allen Rhodes, November 15th, 2145. The situation here in Sector 1 is bad. Shortly after getting the auxiliary grid synced with the main array, we experienced a huge power surge. And uh, the, uh, the output readings are normal, which leads me to that it's not the auxiliary core. It, it sounds like a problem with the main array. Regardless, I... I started hearing screams and gunfire over one of the channels just before our communications went down. Well, we have been trying desperately to get in touch with Myers over in Exus to see what he knows. Several of my technicians have not reported back yet, and my senior technician described described a bloodbath near a coolant transfer zone. 
Following that transmission, his radio went dead, and I've not heard from him since. This voice actor sounds like Jim Cummings. Technicians reported seeing strange creatures uh, appearing out of thin air, and none of them have reported back yet. Well, anyway. Yeah, Jim Cummings, that's the voice of uh, Winnie the Pooh. I've also been going back and playing the um, the Army Men video games, of all things, like the old ones. And uh, yeah, he did the, the voice acting for all of those games. So one interesting thing about this game in VR is that you can see very clearly the high-definition textures rather than the actual three-dimensional models. Like, uh, for example, well... Yeah, that's kind of one. Um, but more specifically, the door here. Let me see if I can... Can I close the door? No, I can't close the door. Well, anyway, this door is a particular standout. The model itself is just a flat image, but the actual artwork is modeled to look three-dimensional. And you can't tell when you're looking at just a regular... Ooh, monitor. You know, like a regular... Like you're playing a video game normally. But when you're playing it in VR, it's really, really obvious. And it's a little strange, but it doesn't, like, take me out of the... You know, like, it doesn't take me out of it. It's just an interesting sort of thing to, to notice. So you can see your flashlight power on that little thing right there. It's a little hard to notice, but you can see the power like kind of going down a little bit. Yeah, you can see the sort of blue going away. And the same thing with your sprint meter. I am moving normally here, and I'm sprinting here. And yeah, you can see the, uh, the little sprint figure there starting to move down a little bit. It took me a minute to find that when I was playing this game for the first time. I was just like, do I have infinite stamina? Like, where, where is that? But then I noticed that little uh, icon on my wrist. Oh, Lost Souls. Oh, the Lost Souls that more resemble, like, the classic uh, 93 Lost Souls. With, like, the horns, you know, the demonic features, rather than the weird, like, cybernetic floating heads that, uh... Oh, hello. Rather than the weird cybernetic floating heads that were in the core game. Oh, here we go. So I think I can get the super shotgun with this PDA. <clears throat> Chris Vargas, November 5th, 2145. Our initial testing on the primary alignment module indicated excessive stress fracturing. Interruptions. Like the one earlier this week when Dave Voss, our security officer, insisted I change the code yet again for the cabinet displaying the shotgun my brother sent to me. <laughs> it's not like I actually used the damn thing. Uh -uh. I sent an email off to the guy with a new code. Vargas, signing off. Oh. Hmm. Maybe there's another PDA around here somewhere. He said he sent a... an email? Hmm. Yeah, maybe it's on another, like, uh, PDA that I can find somewhere. Okay. Hello.
Yeah, I don't remember the code. Okay. Um, I can play through this lost mission a few times. Oh, jeez. Hello. Hello? There you are. That's right. Suck on that. Alright, that actually kind of hurt. Well, eh, not a lot. Okay. Alright. Uh, yeah, now I think I need to jump down on this pipe. I think? I'm pretty sure. I don't want to mess this up, so I'm going to save. Oh yeah, that's my, like, regular save file there. Start a new save. There we go. Okay. Hello? Is that not what I'm supposed to do? I guess that's not what I'm supposed to do. Okay. Got my health back. There you are! Okay, I guess I am supposed to just go back right now. Yeah, this seems pretty, uh, scripted, so to speak. Not quite, buddy. Okay, yeah, that guy's PDA got me this to work. And then I, I can head back there later to get the super shotgun, I'm sure. Oh, there is, like, a button for, like, doing a 360-degree turn. Yeah, I don't... Something about that is a little bit immersion-breaking to me! Jesus Christ! <laughs> okay. So, yeah, I don't really use the, uh, this thing at all. But, uh, maybe I should. I don't know. Whatever. One other thing that's just a little bit annoying, and they probably do this for, like, balance reasons, because they, you know, don't want you to encourage, you know, like, precision shooting with the shotgun or... or you know, whatever. But, uh... Yeah, there's no laser sight on the shotgun, but you've got a laser sight on, like, every other weapon. So you've got one on the machine gun and the pistol. Those are the only other guns that I have right now. But you have them on every other gun. You've got it on the chain gun. You've got a weird one on the chain gun. You've got it on the plasma gun. Uh, you've got, like, a weird throwing arc for the grenades. Yeah, which was what I was just about to say, actually. Like that. But, uh, yeah. Nothing for the shotgun. Let's look at this PDA. Hey! 731 is the super shotgun cabinet. Sweet. Oh, hello. Oh, jeez! I think my grenade did kill him. <laughs> cool. They did a pincer move. Good thing they didn't do a temporal pincer move. Yeah, I saw Tenet. It was fine. I did not love it, but I didn't hate it. Oh, jeez! Hello, hello, hello! Alright. Uh, can I just ride the elevator back up to the super shotgun? I probably can. Health. 
Alright, 731, I think. Booyah! Alright, so I haven't used this guy at all yet. Because I've only played the base campaign, which doesn't have a super shotgun. Pretty satisfying. Yeah, that's one thing that I remember though about the super shotgun from Doom 3, because, you know, I did play through this DLC a while ago. Uh, but I just remember the super shotgun, and even the regular shotgun, just has like kind of a weird spread. It's still a good gun if you use it right, I guess, but uh, something about it just feels a little strange to me. But we'll see. And I don't like the forced reload animation. It's way too slow. shells I have. I have 209 shotgun shells? Alright. Yeah, I'm not too worried about ammo. Yeah, that's one thing. I remember the original, like, version of the game, like, before the BFG edition. Oh, jeez! Oh, jeez! Oh, jeez! I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. Or maybe I won't. Well, I'll die soon if I don't get some health. Uh, but I remember ammo was really scarce back in, like, early editions of the game, and they, like, patched in updates or, like, the, the re-releases of the game, like, ammo is not a problem anymore. Barely killed him. Okay. Yeah, I've still got plenty of health. Okay, we're good. Please insert SSD drive accepted. Stand oh, the, the grabber. That's the war to One moment. I'll open the shielding. There. The shield should be open. Uh, 
Hello? Notice the PSVR version struggles with at least is that like you can see me moving forward, but there's not really any movement forward. So that's a little bit of a shame, but uh, not a big deal. Auto save. Another thing that came with the uh, BFG edition wasn't really a thing before that. Hey, look at that. Health station. Take that. Ammo, which, as established earlier, is not even remotely a problem. Oh, intense music. Oh, an arch vial! Jeez. Stop. There we go. Kind of cooked me a little bit. Yeah, I like the pacing of this Lost Mission a lot more than the base game. It just goes by a lot faster, so it's a much, uh, sort of, like, more satisfying experience to just go back and replay on casual playthroughs. You know, the core, like, every, no matter what, like, the, just the level design inherent to this game, there's so much stuff that's just hidden in ventilation shafts like this. And you just have to wonder, from, like, a plausible level, because, you know, they kind of strove a little bit more for realism in Doom 3 compared to the other Doom titles. Like, who's doing that? Who's just leaving grenades in ventilation shafts? <laughs> I mean, come on, guys. Like, what frickin' technician is losing his job over that? Just one hit killed an arch vial. Okay. That hurt though. I definitely took some damage getting that close to him. Alright, let's get out of here. I guess it's okay. Okay, yeah, we, we are getting out of here. Alright. Warning. Local security lockdown is in effect. Service sub level access. Yeah, some health. A little bit better. Hmm? Grunt, grunt. Oh, hey. Ammunition. Um. It's probably a PDA, like, in that room or something. I don't think it's on one that I already got, but let's see. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. Okay. <laughs> 286 shells. I have so many shells! I am drowning in shells, and I have, what, 555 machine gun ammo? Machine gun bullets? Hello? 
Hello? Is there somebody down there? Give me a headache. Hey, wake up! Hey, wake up! Buddy! Oh, 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 okay. Well. Okay, there's gotta be a guy down here. I keep hearing him. means we all got some spoiters good night Okay, there we go. He figured it out. <laughs> Good for you. Oh, oh, is he going in circles again? Oh, uh-oh. Oh, uh-oh. Oh, oh. 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 What? Oh, oh, there he goes. All right. Okay, he figured it out a couple of times. Probably got that uh, code on there that I'm looking for. Yeah, six three one. Probably get back there at some point, but I'll just try to remember that for now. Six three one. Hmm. What do I have a feeling this is going to be a trap? Ah, yep. How did I know? Oh! Spoilers! I recognize that sound. Oh, hello. Jesus Christ. Okay, 
think we're good. More grenades that I never use. Stuck boy? Is he stuck? Oh, hello. <laughs> yeah, he's stuck. He's going in circles. Right, how about give him one of these? There we go. <laughs> More grenades than I never use. Proceeds to use grenades. heard you. Okay, I guess this is the way forward. I'm gonna wrap it up in a, in a little bit here. I'll probably just, like other videos on my channel, just stick to, you know, one hour sessions. up on me. Uh, what was it? 731? 751? What was it? Oh, shoot. I'll just bring it up again. No. Move. Oh. Alright, what do we got? 631. Oh, hello! It's not just ammunition, it's a big boy! Yeah, look at the laser sight on the chain gun, it's so weird. I mean, it's... It's what it is because that's like the spread of it, so to speak. It's So it's kind of helpful the way that it's there, but it's just like... The shotgun doesn't get a laser pointer, but this thing does. This weird friggin' laser pointer. Hey, I'll take it. This gun really, really badly, like... Uh, phases through the environment all the time because it sticks out so far from you. Look at this. <laughs> Scan, please. Okay. Yeah, I think I'll call it... Oh. Okay. There we go. Alright. I think I'll call it after I load the next area here. Maybe maybe take a peek in here, but call it, call it quits after that. Oh, I can go for a few minutes more. We'll see. Knock, knock. Let the devil in. Benevolent, Marine. as I've ever been. Picking Head is spinning, this medicine screaming. In your direction. There should be a sentry box station nearby if you need assistance. Ah! 
I got to sprint. I I need to get like the muscle memory down to respond to those guys by sprinting backward, and I always space it. Doom 3 is another one of those games where every weapon is viable, realistically. And because ammo is so common, like you just have ammo for everything all the time forever. You can just use whatever weapon you want whenever you want. So it's like switching weapons is less a uh, strategic, yeah, strategic necessity as much as it is just like a personal choice. You're like, you know what, I'm kind of getting sick of the uh, machine gun. I'm going to switch to the shotgun. You know, I'm kind of getting sick of the shotgun. Let's switch to the chain gun. Oh, I'm kind of sick of the chain gun. Let's go back to the machine gun. You know. But yeah, Doom 3 is, is a game like that. Doom 2016 was the same way. Like, you could realistically just, like, fight through every arena with whatever gun you wanted and anything was viable. That is not an option in, uh, Doom Eternal. Hello! Can we get a sentry bot? <gasps> look at the little guys! Oh, look at how cute they are! Hang on, boo-boo. Let me, uh... I got everything. Okay, alright. Let's go party. Yeah, just, like, always full on ammo all the time. No matter what difficulty you're playing on. Go on! Scan your little thingy! Alright, let's go. I think the sentry bot can, like, technically die, but you basically have to just, like, ignore every single enemy in order to let that happen. Full on health. Yeah, I'm doing fine right now. I don't say it. You again, him, I get him. Aha, teamwork. Oh no. Okay. He's good. He's good. Sentry? Little sentry bot? Oh, there you are. Okay. I would have been sad if you had died. He couldn't decide if he wanted to attack me or the sentry bot. Oh, hello, Revenants! Okay, good job. Good job, buddy. Ooh. Who do you think you are? Some John Woo guy? Something? Pun. I don't have a pun. Whatever. Who do you think you are? A John Woo action movie star? Nah, yeah, yeah, funky. Didn't work. Alright. That's hey, security clearance updated. Alright. Aha! Oh, he had a chain gun. You alright, buddy? You doing okay? Why don't we switch to the chain gun ourselves, huh? <laughs> Just. Gangsta style with the chain gun. Okay, sorry, I will never do that again.
You alright, Boo Boo? Doing okay? Yeah, I think, um, yeah, you can just shoot the rockets out of the air. Hello, rocket launcher! Criminally underpowered rocket launcher. Okay, let's see if this PDA picked up has this ammunition code. I bet it does. 847. 847. Hello! Yes, please. I want a plasma gun. Can I have a plasma gun? Oh, how did I miss that? Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez! Sentry bot! I'm coming! Don't die, everybody! What's going on here? Oh, hello! It's not Hell Knights! Didn't expect that! Alright. Another Hell Knight! Yeah, dang man, the, the pace of this game is so much faster than the main game. I mean, I've only been playing for an hour and already I have like, two-thirds of the guns. And already we're fighting Hell Knights and Arch Vials. Locked? Alright. Oh, let me see. You know what, though? I think I am going to call it quits here. That seemed like a really good place to stop, actually. Transfer control. Oh, yeah, look at that. He's going to take a nap, and I think so are we. All right, let me save the game here. Yeah, don't overwrite my uh, regular core game. All right. Well... That was fun, right? Oh, I just realized that uh, this thing is glowing red. I wonder if it... Gl yeah, I guess it just glows red like that. Cool. Let's just uh, turn that guy off. All right. But yeah, I think that the uh, the Doom 3 VR port is, is pretty good. I feel like IGN gave it like a 5 out of 10. That seems a little harsh. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, it's there are probably more innovative VR titles. But in terms of just like, yeah, you just want to play Doom 3? You just want to play it in VR? Yeah, it works. Works great. And I really, really like the small things that they did to sort of uh, tweak the gameplay a little bit. I like that they altered the sound design for the weapons and added the laser sights and all that. Like, it's playing it in VR is easier, even, to me, than playing it on PC for some reason. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I find it a lot easier, and that's why even playing on a veteran, it's like, yeah, I didn't even come close to dying, like, at all. Like, maybe one or two encounters there, I maybe suffered a little bit, but... Anyway, I'll probably uh, do uh, one or two more of these at some point in the future, so uh, stay tuned for those, but you all have been lovely. I assume. I don't know. I don't care. Whatever. I'll see you next time. Bye.